Aloha everybody. So good to see you guys again after what feels like such a long time. We're at the final quarter moon right now. So last week was the full moon, which was when we did the full moon activation. And that was a big message revealed. Now this week is the in-between week. It's the final quarter moon. So it's about closing up this past cycle and starting off on the right foot for the new moon to come. So it's very much the in-between week. We're figuring out how to navigate this part of the process where we're ready to accept, integrate, let go of everything that has taken us to where we are here now so that we can prime ourselves for what's about to come. So when we ask these cards, which represent these different archetypes, they simply reflect back to us those simple tips in the form of universal truth that will help us to most gracefully move through this particular part of the process. So as usual, I'm tuning in from the lovely Sedona, Arizona. Actually, last week I was tuned in from the headwaters of the Verde River, and that was really special. But I'm back home in Sedona. Where in the world are you tuning in from? Let me know in the comments where you're tuning in from. And while we're live, I invite you to think about someone who might like to jump in this portal with you right here, right now, live. Of course, the recording will be shared afterward here on Facebook, also YouTube and Instagram, Rebecca Magic, for those who aren't on Facebook. But if there's somebody you know who is on Facebook and you think they might enjoy this activation, or they might help us to enhance the message, then invite them now. Maybe you want to share this video with your favorite group. When I shuffle them, I'm just simply waking up the different parts of the mind that they each represent. Saying hello, waking them up, activating them. We have Denmark in the house, Australia in the house, Oregon in the house, Oklahoma in the house. Now I'm going to do the same thing with the Hebrew deck, they look like this. And it works the same way each card or each letter represents a different piece of archetypal wisdom. Awesome, we got a few from Australia tonight. Alrighty, so what is the first thing we say? Thank you. Thank you in advance, Archetype Spaces of the One, for the message that we are about to receive. And on the final quarter moon, we're asking, what is the key focus right now as we move through this part of the process? What is the most important point to focus on as we navigate the bridge into this new cycle that begins next week. Also known as the challenge and gift. Okay, before I pull a Hebrew card, I'm gonna pull one more of these for a foundation. Why are we going through this in particular? What is at the root of the situation right now? And what has been the root of the situation for this past cycle? Men and ally of the week. Okay, here we go. Okay, this is the current focus, also known as the challenge and the gift. It's the four of swords. It looks like this. See it pretty clearly. And this is all about rest and integration for like the fourth leg of the four part cycle of the moon herself. So the fact that we're starting off with a four 
you can have that obvious reflection of, okay, we're at the final quarter, fourth quarter, fourth leg of this cycle. It's a time for rest and integration. This is a key card for this moon phase. So if this is the challenge, remember that some of us experience it more on the challenging end, some of us more on the gift end, but most of us back and forth, back and forth. So don't just consider how it's maybe manifesting positively or negatively, consider them both. So on the more negative end of the spectrum or on the more challenging end of the spectrum, you can see this as manifesting your life as a need to rush, a need to keep going, a need to know, need to know, need to have a solution. Um, feeling like you can't rest until you find out this piece of information or to, until you feel that sense of control in your current situation. But the irony is that once we let go, things will flow. So again, this is showing up maybe in your life as a challenge in a way where you want to rush. You want to rush into the next phase of your life. You want to know what's going to happen. You want all of the answers now. But the positive aspect of this card looks like, okay, I can embrace rest. I can embrace change. I can understand that the most important part of the process of transformation is the integration. Just like this final quarter moon, it's so important because how we close one cycle determines how we open the next. How we honor the end determines how we're going to experience the beginning. The end and the beginning really are truly only one. The end is implicit in the beginning and the beginning is implicit in the end. So we can shift our thoughts from this space of anxiety or rushing. And a lot of us might even be doing this totally unaware. Rushing throughout our day, not even aware we're doing this. So be honest with yourself. Even if you've been the slightest bit impatient, how can you become aware in those subtle moments and shift your thoughts from impatience to absolute patience, just to tip the scales? just to neutralize the effects of all of those moments collectively that you spent unknowingly in this pattern of anxiety or impatience. So some of you may be saying, no, I'm, I'm super patient and I love resting and integrating and I'm so there. Then you're being challenged to do it more, to open more, to take it to the next level. If you really think Especially when you really think, I got this. I'm complete. That's when the next round is beginning because the growth is never ending. So especially if you find yourself saying, yeah, I'm good. I'm integrating right now. I'm resting right now. Ask, how can I do it with more awareness? How can I do it more intentionally? How can I set aside, aside maybe a time every day that I'm just going to rest and tune into my body? Just one time a day, but the same time each day for maybe three days, creating some sort of a structure. Okay, because four is also about form, pattern, structure. So really creating an intentional strategy to carve out that time in your daily life to rest. And especially carving out the time to rest and integrate, not just in smaller, more subtle ways each day, but in bigger ways as you move through larger transitions. So life is a cycle within a cycle within a cycle, right? So we can have these patterns in, in different proportions according to the different areas of our lives. Meaning you can create a space for rest each day that's maybe more simple, more subtle, but there are bigger endings in cycles. For example, the moon cycle, the final quarter moon, that's once a month. Seasons, when seasons change, those are big celebrations, big rituals. So then you can create a distinction between those bigger points and the everyday life by shifting the ritual to accommodate the bigger energy, meaning resting more, integrating more, setting aside more time to integrate with more awareness, tuning into that part of the cycle within nature, knowing that it's happening inside of you and all around you. So we're being challenged now to look at the ways in which we are not resting and integrating enough and do it. 
and look at the ways that we are, that we have been integrating, the, the ways we learned how to do that, and now asking ourselves, how can we take that to the next level? Okay, so there's something else that I feel is really specific that I'm seeing is we're so quick to want to move through whatever we have to move through to get to where we want to be that we forget the journey, we forget the little moments in between that bring the growth, that shape our character, that fulfill our spirit. But don't be so quick to get into it because that thing that you think is there on the other side might not even really be of value to you once you make it through the battle or once you make it through the to-do list of all you've got to do to even get there. Really ask yourself, is it going to be fulfilling? And now is the time that you can pause and rest and integrate to really get in tune with your truth so that when you do take your step forward into whatever it is you're going to have to commit to, to get to where you want to be, You'll be making sure you're choosing the right thing. You'll be making sure you're confident in what you're asking for. You'll be making sure you take a moment, a moment to consider what your life is going to be like when you have that thing. Because so many of us are, I'm on to the next thing. I'm on to the next thing. I want this. I want that. And I want, I want to do this job. And I want to do that job. I want all the jobs. I want all the this. I want all the that. And it's like, do you stop and really see yourself having whatever that is? How is it going to affect your life? And sometimes it just takes a moment of pause to realize, oh yeah, it's just so not worth it. Like we sign ourselves up for things without really knowing what we're committing to or knowing but choosing to be in denial of just what it really entails because we want whatever's on the other side so badly. But we gotta ask why and how is it gonna be when I have that thing and all of the, the experiences that are gonna bring me to that thing, are they gonna perhaps change my mind along the way? How is all this going to make me feel? It's worth a pause before saying a yes or a no to whatever comes next. Why we're doing this. Knight of Cups. Okay, I suspect that we're deepening our relationships right now. And for a lot of people, I think this might look like, oh, I'm, I'm really excited about leaving this relationship, or I'm really excited about deepening in this relationship, or I'm really excited about this shift within whatever relationship. But before we take action, right? Knight, Knight of Cups is all about acting on the emotions acting on those waters in the cup, representing the emotions of the heart, the affections of the heart. So before we take action from our heart to whomever we're relating with, even our environment, it's all alive, it's all connected, it's all one. We're taking this pause right now so that we can make sure that whatever we take on next on our path, whatever challenges, whatever experiences we go through next, We'll make sure that we're first setting our intention for that experience to keep us on the path of our original goal of expansion of the psyche and the spirit so that I can be sure that whatever I call in next, I'm carrying those higher intentions so that when I go through it, when I go through whatever comes next after this moment of pause, I'll be able to approach it from the heart. I will be able to approach it so that I can fill not just my cup, but our one holy grail of a heart, our collective heart. So it's, remember, this is the foundation card down here. So it's saying we're going through this challenge of needing to rest and pause so that we can get right with ourselves, tune back into our pure positive intentions that involve not just us, but the whole. Remembering that's where the power lies. That's why we're really here. That's what's going to produce any sort of a sustainable effect. So I'm pausing before I go ahead with all of my opportunities and experiences so I can make sure I tighten up the ship, realign my heart and mind so that whatever experience I go through next, I, car <laughs> I carry my intention into it. I'm pausing right now. I'm not like, whoa, horsey. I'm pausing. And I'm going to fill myself with positive intentions in this great pause so that when I come out of it, Whatever I'm riding into, it's with the heart first. So it's like, look, I'm approaching with the heart first. Also, I'm holding it out to have it be filled. And 
the ally of the week. The final letter of the Hebrew alphabet. It's the letter Tav, T-A-V. 22nd letter. And the Tav is connected really to both the fool, because remember Aleph, the first letter of the alphabet, has a number value of one. It's connected to the magician, despite modern tarot's explanation. The Tav is actually connected to the fool because the fool is like zero, but remember the beginning is in the end and the end is in the beginning. So it's like secretly contained in the Tav. The other card that's connected to the Tav is the materialist, also known as the annihilist. And this is in the Egyptian tarot. And this card is all about the fool gone wrong, yet knowing the positive element to going wrong beyond our judgment of what is right or wrong is that we have this grand opportunity to come here and yes, make mistakes. Just like the original story of Genesis and Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, we fall to rise again. And so the, the message of the tub is saying, yes, you'll mess up, yes, you'll make mistakes, but you can be reborn again and again as many times as it takes. So 22 reduces to a four, form, right? But four was also the emperor, AKA the sovereign, the original form. 22 is like the final form, which is really infinite. 22 reduces to a four. It's the two, two, double two, the two being reborn as the two again, mother, father, giving birth to another being that contains those polarities. There's lots of ways to look at it. Actually, if you guys are really interested in going deep with this sort of stuff, please reach out and ask me about my class. I have a video course on each of the major arcanum cards, 60 to 90 minutes long each class. Please ask me about it. This one's particularly interesting because you don't see card number 22 in most modern decks, really in any of them. So if this is the ally this week, it's saying, look, sometimes we rest and we see prophetic visions. We have dreams that are so powerful and really it's still all coming from the subconscious. There's no place other than the one which we're all a part of. So sometimes you might rest and have these prophetic visions and, and, and still they're the subconscious, right? They're still your own projections because there's only one here. But sometimes we rest and we still end up moving into something too quickly or we still end up making the wrong decision. But we have to rise above this judgment of right or wrong. Just do our best. Focus all of our energy on just doing our best. This is the message of Tav. You do your best, and if you got to try again, you'll end up trying again. It's all good. Having any feeling of doubt, carrying, walking with any feeling of doubt, no matter how big or small, it's still taking away from your potential to be holy and fully here now, carrying just your positive intention to move ahead on your path. So the Tav is saying, you can set aside your worries of messing up. There are no mistakes in divine order. We're human, we have free will, so that we could figure this thing out from our own will, from our, our own hearts, by choice. And if we remember the foundation of this work, if we remember that we're doing all that we're doing so that we can show up with our heart and so that we can fill up our one collective heart, if we just remember we're doing that, then we're already ahead of the game. And we already can never make mistakes. That's the thing. It's an illusion. So if you just focus on the goal of staying in that heart space, you certainly should not have to worry about mistakes. You do your best. That's it. Stop giving your awareness to some thought in the back of your head that says, but what if you make the wrong choice? But what if you do it wrong? If you're leading truly with your heart, you're doing your best. And whatever mistakes you make become lessons and blessings in hindsight. So this is what the letter and the lesson of Tav remind us of. Let go of your fear of making the wrong choice. Let go of your fear of making mistakes. We all make them. Do your best. The one does the rest. 
And if you're leading with your heart, which means you're leading with the light of the virtues is really what the essence of the light of the heart is. If you're leading with your heart, which means you're leading with the virtues, the mistakes you make will be forgiven because they're coming from still a place of compassion and innocence and good intention. And that's the best that we can do. So if we are approaching life from that space, we're staying centered in that space, we absolutely have nothing to worry about. We should not be sitting in fear of what if I make the wrong decision? Focus your best on living from your heart, living in your heart, and you will never have to entertain those fears because you're doing your honest best. Okay, when we are experiencing or embodying vice, the karma that we incur from the mistakes in that space is different because we're, we're being intentional. Okay, when you're being intentionally and consciously malicious, yeah, maybe you're going to feel that fear or that shame or that guilt because it's whatever karma is on the way and reflection of your choices. And so you know your choices. You can't hide from that. And so you feel that karma before it comes because as you're committing the act or saying the word or thinking, thinking the, the thing, the effect is already hmm, accepted within your being it's a contract that we have with the law but if you're not intentionally doing those things they will become lessons it will only add to your grace and to your path so let go of the fear of that you are eternal there's no final form the light is infinite so rest remember why we're here to move forward heart first with the mission of filling it up with ever more light how can you make some shifts in your thinking in your words and in your actions as you remember the true mission adjusting desires letting go of things we think or thought we needed refining our process in remembrance of the goal of the fulfillment of the one heart. So I just want to point out that we got a four of swords and we got the top of the 22, which reduces to a four. So you can see even further the connection. A four, a 22, and a knight of cups. Love in action. You might have thought also that, oh, you know, I'm resting now and I'm processing and thinking about all the choices I've made. And, you know, I think they are putting me in the right direction because they're going to bring my family wealth or they're going to, you know, an abundance or the choices I'm making are going to make people around me happy. And while things may seem very positive, make sure that despite the positivity on the surface, that if you look more closely at the inner details of the situation, that it's actually going to serve you in a way that's going to help you not just people around you, but you be more in your heart. Thing, there are many good things out there. There's lots of good to come across. Yet we can't say yes to every situation. We have to pick situations beyond there being good or bad on the outside, but picking situations and experiences, calling in experiences because of what they have to offer you in the realm of the growth of the psyche and the spirit. Okay, so resting right now and reviewing all the decisions you've made recently and where you're headed and that's all great. And think about the, the positive things that they're bringing, but not just to one person, okay? Not just to yourself or not just to one other person and not just a temporary effect. We wanna think of how we can refine our choices in thought, speech, and action and how we can choose what to say yes and no to simply by considering the effect it will have on the collective via our own inner growth. What opportunities for expansion lie within this experience for me so that through me, the one may expand in some profound way. Yes, abundance is great for one and all. How much abundance is this really gonna bring in and how is that gonna reflect spiritually, mentally, emotionally? You know what I'm saying? Cause you can be saying, well, I'm, I'm gonna say yes to this opportunity. It's gonna bring my family a lot of money. 
Okay, and also, is it going to bring you wealth in other areas of your life? Is it? Are you going to be healthy mentally? Are you going to be healthy emotionally? What effect is this new position going to have on your family? This new job? So it's so multifaceted, and that's why we need to take the time to rest to really consider just what my choices are going to bring, not just to me, but to the one. And even if, and you're going to be tempted, okay? Even if you just made some powerful decision, trust your gut. Listen, if there's something in there that's saying, no, this is not the right decision. Don't be afraid to change your mind. The only constant is change. The best thing we can do is hold space for ourselves and each other to change our minds because things are always changing and we constantly have to adapt. So as you're going through this moment of pause and integration, really reviewing your most recent decisions and the ones you're about to make, know that even if up until that very moment you were so sure you wanted to choose this, but if there's some little part of you that says, no, I want to choose that, Honor that, at least entertain it for a moment, look into it, feel into it. Perhaps you've been making a decision out of a denial of a certain aspect of that situation. Or maybe you're making that decision from a, a past version of yourself, even if it was just two days ago, because maybe you've changed a lot in the last two days. Who knows what has happened in this crazy world in your life in the last couple of days. So remember, as we review right now and close up, the new moon is going to be time to go. So before then, while we have these few precious days, let's really sink in and ask ourselves, how can I refine my thoughts, words, and actions to bring greatness, not just to myself, but to the one? How can I remember anyway that none of this is real, that this whole temporary world of appearances is just dust in the wind. It's going to be gone one day. So what am I doing right now? that goes beyond this lifetime? How am I using the present situation and yes, the material of my reality, including relationships? How am I using it all as a ritual to feed that which is eternal, which is the light? Okay, there you have it, Hebrew Tav. Knight of Cups, Four of Swords. Hope you guys had an awesome Passover if you celebrated. I hope you had an awesome Easter. I wish you peace and alignment, harmony, a meaningful experience each moment. And if you want to learn more about the archetypes in the way that I view them, please ask me about my books. I love signing and sending from my hands directly to yours, so reach out anytime. I also have two private groups on Facebook if you want to join and go a little bit deeper. One is called the Archetypal Alliance, where we talk about all things this in between activations. The other one is Shabbat Crew, S-H-A-B-B-A-T Crew. And every week we talk about the Kabbalah of the current Torah story and all things Shabbat. So if you're interested in Jewish mysticism, I'll see you there. And I love you guys so much. Thank you for sitting with me and being open-minded and open-hearted and for following the symbolism in a way that is pure and true and totally in resonance with all things natural and holy. There's nothing dark magic about this. And when you can look at something and see its higher purpose, see its divine purpose, there's nothing to shame. There's nothing without purpose in this world. So remember that. Thank you guys. Feel free to share this activation with your family and friends if you think they're gonna help to elevate this message even more, please share it with them. If there's somebody down and you think they could really use this message to uh, uplift them and put the smile back on their face, please send it their way. I love you guys. Shalom.